hi guys welcome to cinema express and today we have with us two time academy award winning uh, costume designer jenny bevan and she's joining us today for disney scrivella uh, hi jenny hi how are you i'm very well thank you but i'm just back from prague um in london um so everything's a bit of a mess um in my house i apologize but uh, anyway i'm very well thank you right hi so the first uh, question to you will be that you know uh in most of the films we can refer to you know the character design can just gel with the setting but in cruella the character design be the costume and everything it that's a subject matter itself right and it um, was that an added pressure there for you it's always a pressure but the thing is you're always working from a script and the script was fairly clear on her her progress her path her arc of how the clothes develop so that that was there plus there are some pointers like you know she's got to do this at that point and this at that point and whatever so it's never just about the clothes it's the storytelling with the clothes mm. and i started with her basically putting together stuff from her mother's laundry basket as was in the, one of the original scripts and that was a really we, we don't see it in our film but it's a really good way of just saying okay this child is very creative and loves clothes and is really clever at what she puts together and i did it as a, a sort of starting point for myself so then i could build on that and of course you know she's a rebel at school that's all in the script um so what she does with her uniform and how it then develops and how she then joins the boys and becomes a relatively successful pickpocket and obviously gets very skilled at sewing and that it's all kind of there for you as a guide and then it's really how you interpret it now i was there in the 70s i remember the clothes and i remember what we did with them and going to vintage stores and putting stuff together so that side of it was relatively straightforward for me it's when we get into the much more you know cruella and she joins the baroness and she becomes a designer herself and is obviously very talented and the baroness is a good designer and maybe a little old fashioned but she's good so cruella's going to learn well there and that whole thing it then becomes extremely interesting as to how she develops and that that was also i had an amazing crew with very talented cutters and makers and dyers and painters and fitters so you know i i wasn't on my own i i had a lot of people around me to bounce off and to check with and to get them to make prototypes and try this and try that so that's um, how it went. right and i must own uh, you know she told that uh, the costumes did half the work for her and as an actor and you know her character crew were like some was a designer in the film right so what sort of conversations happened between you and emma like did she pick up some insight into the world of costume designing from you i mean she's she, what she's brilliant at is selling clothes so she puts them on and she owns them and she and she poses in them and she has fun with them particularly with these because they are mainly quite fun to wear i don't think we gave her anything too um uncomfortable but she seemed to come to it very open i mean she obviously knew it she'd been on board with it for a long time and we went for it rather fast because she had a window of opportunity in her schedule so it was a very short prep time uh but basically my way of working with Nat to like her and certainly with something like Cruella was to take a mass of clothes and try them on fit her and we did it in her kitchen in Los Angeles it was a joyous day um i had a lovely little team with me who all organized it beautifully so we could, we could sort of steam through it and she is very welcoming and very generous emma stone is and so out of that i don't think we used one single garment but we got a ton of looks and the way we could then progress but it's all about with costume design when you actually try it on the actor it's not about making nice drawings or making you know um it's all about trying it on discussing it seeing how it can work what you know it it's a collaboration right and you mentioned baron as emma thompson's character right and there is a you know even through the trailer we can see that there's a sense of dominance and basity that uh, when she appears on screen um yes. were there any like you know um, real life inspirations to uh, kind of design such uh, extravagant you know uh, costumes for her um I can't remember anything specific other than looking at very classy women in the 60s probably more than the 70s um you know there's a lot online you can get old magazines so Dior obviously is in there somewhere um and then basically I just bought a mass of 
cut of fabric because we knew she had 30 odd looks and went to my cutter Jane Law who would just do the Baroness that was her it was quite enough you know but so she became like her designer in a way and her maker and so I would go to Jane's studio we'd put fabric on the stand we'd drape it we'd find looks we'd sort of tweak it into into a look and then say well that would really work for um, that and then Emma came up with the idea of a shirt not always wearing dresses in the workroom and I thought that was wonderful because I hadn't thought of that one we tried a white shirt but it just didn't work but brown her lovely rich browns and golds um, seemed to work really well so that's how we did that just sort of draping really right and I want to ask you so you earlier told that you know uh, the color palette that you had for this film was black white uh, red and gray um, right, so I, I assume that you had a bit of fun by you know experimenting with uh, different shades of this color. So how was it working with uh, you know, such an idea? Well, I I do it again always on a stand. I I I take fabric and I just put it, and if it's right, I use it as it is. But very often we dye it. I've got normally a big textile department, and so they can just take the color off a little bit or push it up a bit or whatever. So that's always fun, but I, I am very instinctive and I have been around quite a long time, so I kind of know what things will do on screen. Um, but yes, it was restricted in one way, but there were a lot of browns in there because 70s was actually very brown. We all love Bieber brown and um, brown velvet suits and, and, and the Baroness is very brown. And, but Cruella herself, no, she's definitely, she's a rebel. She's out there, black, it's her colour. All right, and I have to ask you about that one scene which we even saw in the trailer which stood out, that transition scene. Uh, Cruella, um, you know, lights oh, up a match yeah. and there's a transition that happens there. And I assume that, I mean, I wanted to ask you when I looked at that scene in the trailer, it looked like there's a little bit of VFX and graphics involved, but how did you shoot this scene? How, like, uh, can you just take us into that? So, yes, you're absolutely right, it is visual effects. You could have done it. We made sure that it was possible to do it. There are all these funny fire wires and fire papers, and I um, mean, you can buy them on Amazon. Um, so we knew that it was possible, and I even tried to make something to make sure it would work for real, because I don't like it when it's not completely, um, you know, fake. But, but, no, it was a visual effect, and it's all just to give a real punchy moment to that scene that she ends up in red at a black and white ball. You know, why not? You're Cruella. Right. And uh, Jenny, I wanted to ask you about that one scene where, you know, uh, Cruella just uh, gets on a uh, garbage truck and this, did you see the scene ah. huge yes. uh, ah. dress and the one more scene where she's wearing a red and black dress and she gets on top of a taxi, yes. I believe. Oh, How those are photo bomb moments, yes. Yeah, how challenging is it? And can you just get like take me through the process of how you design such big dresses well, for the film? They are the great fun things to do in movies, and you're very rarely given a chance to do anything as major as that. I had a cutter called Kirsten Fletcher, who's um, from Australia, but she does the world of wearable art, an extraordinary constructionist prop. So she made those. Um, Basically, the, the garbage truck one is one of my favourites because it's got newspaper involved. And, and she says, you know, or at some point it says it's the Baroness's 1967 spring collection. And so what we did, it had to be very light because she's actually got to have it attached to her at some point. And um, we did it in two halves and it's actually all done for real. She really comes out of the garbage truck. She really... Um, is joined up to all that and we just used a huge amount of old frocks um and obviously fabric and anything we could find but it was just it took up the entire floor of the massive workshop at Shepparton as did the red dress that was another major photobomb moment when she's actually empowering um she's or she's sort of proving her point uh over the baroness and trapping her basically in what looks like a pair of opera curtains um, in the car. So again, it was a construction nightmare because it had to be light enough. It had to flow right. It had so many things it had to do. Plus she had to again, be able to wear it only for a moment, but you know, wear it for real. And, um, and I mean, it's just so exciting to be given those challenges right. in a film. And Jenny, um, you know, I wanted to ask you this. So what sort of conversation, what of communication happens between you and uh, Nadia Stacey, the 
uh, you know has stylist and makeup artist because character design is what stands out in this uh, film um it, because it's a inherent part of the character we are talking about it's always a massive part also with the art department that we are all connected now on this it was particularly important obviously because the looks are so specific and so strong and Nadia is absolutely brilliant and we just kept being in it i mean we were all in the same building at Shepperton Studios so that was a massive advantage and and it meant that we could have instant access you know art department upstairs Nadia was sort of across on a on a you know different space but it meant we could all really communicate and i do it with any any film i do the minute i've done the fitting photographs they go to the director and the makeup artist so they know exactly what i've fitted so they can then work towards that or say you know oh gosh i've been thinking of doing something on the hair do you absolutely need a hat or whatever but it was a it's a collaboration and it always should be one is just part of a team as a costume designer you honestly i mean it's it's not about fashion or fine art it's totally about being part of a team right thank you so much jenny for joining me and um, all the best to you for the film thank you so much for joining it's a pleasure thank you mm-hmm.